And what are the factors that are contributing to assessment? What is assessment? Assessment in nursing is a process where a nurse gathers, sorts, and analyzes a patient's health information using evidence-informed tools to learn more about patients' overall health and concerns. Uh, we are very particular what assessment is. So this is our first step for nursing process to assess our patients. Nursing assessment is a crucial aspect of the nursing process that involves systematic and comprehensive evaluation of patients' physical, psychosocial, and social health status. So when the assessment process involves gathering relevant information, about patients' health history, current health status, and any factors that are affect their health. So the nurses use various um, methods for assessments to conduct a nursing assessment, including physical examinations, laboratory tests, interviews, and observation. So when the assessment process, nurses a document that analyzes the, the collected data to develop holistic understanding of the patient's health status and how identify health problems. So um, in critical component of the nursing process, which in provides a foundation for identifying the address the patient's health problem. So, for example, if uh, you are a triage nurse, you should be able to characterize the patient as stable, potentially sta unstable or unstable, so that it will be determined and we decided the urgency of what patient's a treatment. When a performing a general impression, you consider your patients at what level of responsiveness, open bang matania, Respiratory rate and quality, is there any chest movement, if she breathing fast or slow or deep or shallow? Skin si signs niya, what's the color of the patient's basing maputla si patient? Positioning, a level of distress, if she is having discomfort or difficulty breathing. Part of the assessment is to gather the information. Our key to know more about patient is also to how to um to communicate and listen to our patient. Ito yung susi to meet our patient's needs. Dapat we nurses, we should be keen and vigilant to our patients. Even though it's a basic assessment, but it plays crucial role and we are accountable sa anong outcomes. So after the patient shared her concerns, now we will be able to distinguish between the subjective and objective data. Okay, subjective assessment data is information obtained from the patient and or the family members and offers important cues from their perspective. So it is anything that the patient tells us about. So basically that's the subjective information. Anything that they share with us um, according to, um, especially to the significant others, family member, of course, we're going to have to prove and ask close or as well as open-ended questions so that we can gather the answers to get the answers that we need to determine that what we need to do for the patient and also our patient's care. So example in this next slide, Okay, that illustration sample of documented subjective data obtained from a patient assessment. So the patient reports, my pain is a level 2 on a 1 over 10 scale. Okay, so the objective data is anything you can observe through the sense of hearing, sight, smell, and touch while assessing the patient. That is then in the next illustration sample. So as you can see, the nurse taking his vital signs, nurses assess his patient's radial pulse, which is example 
um, the patient count up to 60 or okay 58 to 60 and it's regular the nurse observed also his skin and feels warm and dry because he touched the patient so it is basically all the observations that we do daily to our patient okay next slide and there are several things that are included in this objective data. So it first starts with the chief complaints. It is a medical term used to describe the primary problem of the patient that lead to the patient to seek medical attention. Or chief complaint is describing a reason of concerns for seeking care. And then we go into the history of present illness which obtaining an accurate history is the critical first step in determining the etiology of the patient's problem. Okay, so this is what happened that a um, patient brought to the hospital. If what contributed reason why she is seeking care or having a medical attention. Number three would be a, a review of systems. It is an inventory of the body system that is obtained through a series of questions in order to identify signs and symptoms which the patient may be experiencing. An example of that is having patient's rashes, pruritus. How might other symptoms for other body parts be related to um, she may experiencing? So that's the patient's reason why she seek medical attention. Okay, for the past medical history, it is a total sum of the patient's health status prior to the presenting problem. Okay, we have to look into their past medical history. It is very important also. For example, if the patient is sample admitted by dengue fever last three months. How about, um, is there a surgical history for the patient if she has having a minor or major operation before? That would also included. How about um, if patient have having a allergies? Is the patient is allergic to food or seafoods or even the medications that would lead into the difficulty of breathing? Um, is it allergy to latex or etc.? How about the current medication? If the patient is taking his maintenance, like Luzartan, other vasatine, or as well as uh, vitamins. How about the family history? Um, if she has related family member who died due to the lung cancer or a side of his mother having DM type 2. And also include the patient is, is um, current um, um, social history. Like patient can drink more two bottles a day or more than bottles a day. Um, having um, a smoker or smoking for more than um, 50, uh, 20 years or even use some illegal drugs that would also included to our initial assessment. Again, um, that's the objective data that we all asked for the patient about. And next we proceed for our physical assessment. Physical assessment is a process of evaluating objective anatomic findings through the use of observation, patient, percussion, and of auscultation. So those are the most important parts of gathering data in assessment phase. So that, of course, um, includes vital signs and for the physical assessment, we also approach the patient in the methodological, which is the head-to-toe way. That would never be missed out, okay? How about focus assessment? It is a detailed nursing assessment of specific body system 
related to this presenting problem on other currents certain. Okay, what is this focus assessment? So, um, this is assessment um, conducted to determine to process what is the progress for the patient and what is his health status. So, in short, um, it would target that the evaluation that helps to identify the um, changes of the patient's condition or symptoms. So, our focus here is um, the patient's treatment, of course, and also the plan. Can, can we also use for um, our assessment? Um, we um, review each of this patient's medical history, the physical examination we do, and how we, um, we adjust his patient treatment plan. So that's the focus assessment is all about. For example, if there is um, a patient is having a, a problem in his respiratory or uh, prob having a pneumonia, so we're going to focus on the respiratory system. But um, there are also um, times that um, the problem would be related to other um, system. For example, it's a circulatory status. So we should check the patient's orientation because if the orientation is so bad, um, I think or oxygenation has a lot to do with those. So those signs and symptoms might be apparent if the patient is not doing well, if there is no oxygenation. So that's very also important that we focus our assessment mass. Okay, next would be the review of laboratory or diagnostic test results provided provides relevant and useful information related to the needs of the patients. So this is also very important to review the laboratory of the patient, especially a chest x-ray if there is a result for them having fluid of the lungs, MRIs, CT scan, um, ECG, there are abdominal findings of the heart, and also so forth. Okay. After the evaluation phase of our assessment, we need to make sure that our information collected is accurate and properly documented. Because we nurses, we assess our patient, we are um, required to use critical thinking in order to make um, clinical decisions as well as the plan care of the patient of what um, what goals that we have to meet for our per for a certain patient because um we nurses is very responsible for that for ensuring that um ensuring that our patient has um information collected is on necessary on by steps. Sorry, sorry. So if after we review our laboratory of their patients, if there are findings for um, abnormal assessment, we should hand it over to the doctors. Early natin ito sa doctors natin for yung patients who should undergo continuous assessment or for any changes sa kanilang conditions, okay? So, um, to support our assessment, there is an assessment tool that nurses can use to make our, to make 
sure that our information or our assessment is um, appropriate. So number one assessment tool is the CAGE questionnaire or the CAGE assessment. It is a preliminary test. It's set of this question that are used to show that if the person is a substance abuse dependence in adults. So it was at first developed to show people they may have an ap alcohol abuse problem. Many versions have now been adapted to also identify dependency on drugs. Sometimes the test may be called a cage aid if it is to identify a problem with drug abuse. So the cage assessment is um, a four-item questionnaire that used to screen for alcohol use disorder. So the acronym CAGE stands for C is for cut down, A is for annoyed, G is for guilt, E is for eye opener. So what are those um, questions that um, we should use? Okay. Or C is, we should tell the patient, have you ever thought about cutting back on your drinker or having to stop on drinking? A, so annoyed. Um, have people annoyed you by criticizing your drinking? G is for, are you feeling guilty about your drinking? I is, have you ever had drink first thing in the morning to steady your nerves or get rid of a hangover? Okay. Each four items, if um, patient is, if patient answered yes, responds to each of the questions assigned a point. If with a total score of two or more indicating, it is a possibility of positive alcohol use disorder. Okay. The CAGE assessment is a quick and I think it's an easy way, no, to screen our potential issues with having alcohol. But it's um it's also important also to follow up with a comprehensive assessment and appropriate treatment if necessary. So we should advise or um we should advise other doctor for um, appropriate treatment as long as the patient is um, cooperative. That's the time that the doctor will um, given is um, proper treatment if necessary. The next one would be Glasgow Coma Scale. It is used to objectively describe the extent of impaired consciousness in all types of acute medical and trauma patients. The scale assesses patients according to three aspects of their responsiveness, eye opening, motor, and a verbal response. Okay. Um, this is very commonly used on, um, not only in the ward, but also on any area department. Um, it is a scoring system used to assess the level of consciousness of the patient. If there is a neurological condition, this is appropriate to use. It is also widely used, um, most of the hospital and also in the emergency department. Um, this there is a based uh, three components that define lately. That's um, eye opening, verbal response, and motor response. Uh, each um, component is assigned for the scoring about for the scoring of GSES. 
there's a bo uh, there is a box that each component is assigned a score and three scores should be added together to give a total score ranging from 3 to 15. So a score of 15, that would be indicate a fully awake and responsive patient. So while a score of 3 indicates that the deep unconsciousness or I think it's unresponsive. So here is the breakdown of their scoring system. For example, the, the eye opening is the four points would be the spontaneous. The speech, there is three points if patient can, um, can uh, follow your command. Is when she open his eyes with pain, that's two points. If there is no response, that's one point. For verbal response, if the patient is oriented, you get five points. For confused patient, four points. Inappropriate words, three points. Incomprehensible sounds, or uh, two points. There, if there is no response, that's one point. How about motor response? Um, if the patient is obeys command, that's six points. Localized pain, five points. If the patient withdraws from pain, four points. Flexion in response to pain, three points. Extension in response to pain, two points. And no response is one point. So GCS or Glasgow Coma Scale can be very um, helpful to all of the healthcare providers to have quickly assess the severity of the patient condition and guide treatment decisions. However, it is a very important to note that the scale is not always accurate in predicting outcome because there's also a time that patient would change his neurological um, deviation. Okay, let's now proceed for the pain assessment tool. Okay, assessment tool is a, we all know that it's a fifth vital sign. Um, it is crucial component of providing appropriate care to patients. So as we nurse says, we should be aware of the many factors that can influence patient's pain. Um, when we say pain, there is need to assess through a variety of uh, methods, including um, by base, we should observe the patient. We have a physical examination to do that. Um, but the most common method of the pain assessment is a self-report. Yeah, we do that in our um, areas uh, where, patient, we, where the patient are asked to rate their pain on the scale of uh, 0 to 10. With 0, um, we instructed the patient that 0 being in no pain. And 10 being the worst pain. And other assessment method, we uh, nurses should include um, observation no, of the patient's facial expression, the body language, and the behavior, as well as the physical examination to, the, to identify the source of the pain. Okay. So this is the onset would be the O. Um, what do you want to ask to the to our patient? Um, how when did it begin? Did it begin last week? How long does it last? Is it would last for 24 hours in a day? For letter P is provoking or palliat palliating factors. Um, is that pain feel like it makes it worse or it makes it better? So, if the client struggles to answer the questions, he can provide suggestions such as, um, you should tell the patient if it's aching or it's just 
it's like stabbing or burning sen burning sensation how about the quality um you should tell if how bad is your pain um can you describe the pain and or the region and gradation okay you should ask if where do you feel the pain which part of the body you feel the pain can you point it out um does the pain move around or do you feel the pain elsewhere so anything you should wait the patient to um to point where is the region or where can um can she feel the pain for S is severity, how would you rate your pain on a scale of 0 to 10? That's the um, very common, the self-report. The 0 being in no pain and 10 being the worst pain you've experienced. Okay, um, the severity scale is uh, a very important estimate of pain. And when you used uh, evaluation of treatment effect, that would also... Uh, one of the baseline to provide for um can can nurses um could provide um con uh, control intervention such as encourage the patient to in uh, inhale and exhale um, um and also encourage deep breathing to prevent or to alleviate the pain so that's it how about the T, the timing? When did this start? When did the pain start? Or um, what were you doing when the pain started? Um, how the pain constant or is it come and go? Or, or the pain is intermittent? When did it last occur? So there's a timing or is this, is there a time or a specific time that the pain would occur okay how about you understanding and impact you should ask what do you think is causing the pain okay, the patient would um can share why the pain um is still there so uh in the next slide There is a sample video I want to share to you. Um, it is a um, nurse used um, one of our tool that I already shared to you. Um, I'm sorry, I cannot open. Maybe I can share the video after my report. Is it okay, guys? Okay. okay, I will just send it to our group chat so that you can, um, so that you can see the video. Okay. Um. That's the end of my report. Um, my um, for me, no, when um. When we do assessment, um, we nurses also establish rapport. Importante ang trust na ma-reveal mo for your patients kasi di mawawala yun. They are much comfortable kung may check ka nila at bedside. No? Madami si patient, um, mga chika, about how she can handle the pain. For example, if she is improving, matotolerate tolerate niya ba na ba ang pain? So I do hope we nurses, we must do in systematic way. Um, if we are having a weak foundation of assessment, at least we have these mnemonics and abbreviation tips as accurate and can quickly assess the variety of patients in different conditions and also in various situations. Safe as a patient and we also promote a quality of care.
Um, I think that's all my report. Um, 